People frequently ask if Kiruv is an uh, outreach and to bring uh, our fellow Jews closer is such a fundamental responsibility in Torah. The Hocher Tochir Samisecha, you have to correct. Really, it's to give evidence, to correct, to improve others. The Rambam says it's an integral part of my mitzvah of Avas Hashem is to bring others to a recognition of Avas Hashem. If I don't bring others to Avas Hashem, it's indicative that something is lacking in my Avas Hashem. Zohar in Parshas Truma says that uh, people understood the sechar, the reward for bringing quote-unquote, or show him people who are behaving evilly, that if he was to bring the sechar, to bring them back, they would run after the Rishoyim in the streets. And the, there are more riots, more evidence that this is a fundamental responsibility. So the question is, where was outreach till, uh, till Osamech began 47 years ago? Why, why wasn't our Torah community doing it? Chabad has always been doing outreach, but they didn't do it with a yeshiva format. They were doing it individually where the shlichim were, and they did wonderful work. Yeshiva seems to have started laterally, did start laterally. One, if you, if you analyze the scene after the decimation of the major citadels of Torah, and, uh, the Holocaust by the Nazis, Yemach Shemom V'Zichrom, the first order of business was to rebuild the Torah world. There had to be some place to take the potential Baal Tshuva. There had to be an Olam And that was the first, uh, it was miraculous, uh, the recouping and the regrouping of the, the energies after the war in the United States, in El Cisal, and to a certain extent in, uh, in England. That, so that was step one. When I went to Yeshiva, many of my friends, I would say probably more than half, were children of European immigrants. Some were Nitzolei Ashoa, those parents, not all. but. I was second generation American, which was rare in that, in that group in Chaim Berlin. The, those people that taught us, the Rabbeim that taught us, were for the most part Yiddish speaking, and they didn't have a, I would say, a cultural comfort zone with a secular college student at that time, at that point. The dominant thesis in sociological circles in the academic world was melting potism. Probably a term coined by a Jew, Zangwill, in what he wrote about how to homogenize into the American community, uh, critically, not critically, but at that time that was regarded by most Jews as being the litmus test of how much gratitude you have for America was don't make waves, look like everybody else, be like everybody else, homogenize, melting potism. So there weren't instructors, there wasn't a bikush. The first generation of Jews and the beginning of the second generation, they were anxious to achieve economic and social status in America. They wanted to blend in. They wanted to achieve what they didn't have in Europe. And they did a phenomenal job. It was miraculous. A member of Hutna Zatzal told me when Chaim Berlin purchased their first building in Brownsville, it was from a banker, a secular Jew, and he cried out his heart to Rav Hutna. He said, I built this bank. I landed in the port in New York, I had two ruble in my pocket, phone number of a third cousin who didn't want to speak with me. 
somehow I put it all together, gradually, painfully, built this bank. My son went to the best colleges, lawyer, lives out in the south shore of Long Island. All his clients came from the bank. He doesn't want me to come out there for weekends. He's embarrassed at my Yiddish accent. My son-in-law lives in Westchester. He's an accountant. Similar story. All his accountant, all his accounts come from the bank. He doesn't want me to come out there. Where did I err? Sort of Hutner, Zatzal, saying to me then, look at the creativity, the energy, the imagination of that generation. They succeeded, but they failed. They failed in Ruchnius because they built shuls, they didn't build yeshivas. They created a tremendous sense of a Jewish ethos of climbing the ladder, of acceptance, of being, of excelling in whatever they did, whether it was in the academic world, whether it was in business, wherever they were, had, could find a niche. They expanded it and excelled. But they jettisoned the cargo of their Yiddishkeit along the way. They mistakenly thought that by osmosis, the next generation would be as loyal and traditional as themselves. It didn't work. They misunderstood that the peer group was the most influential impact on any new population, on any population, surely an immigrant population. So you didn't have a, a sense of looking and searching because people were anxious to achieve stability socially and economically. You didn't have teachers because they didn't share a, a cultural language. And the, the environment in the world at large was melting potism. And then the Rebbe Nishlanim spinned the kaleidoscope, as invariably providence does, which way we don't know, but the Rebbe Nishlanim spinned it, and suddenly there was a change in the attitude of this new generation then, between the second and third generation growing up in America, had a comfort zone. They were more relaxed. They weren't scrambling. They weren't hungry fighters. Their parents had sacrificed themselves for them. And now they were relaxed. They had good degrees. They were confident. They began to look, what do I do for an encore? I'm satisfied. I have a certain amount of economic recognition, satisfaction, certain amount of confidence that comes with that. As a result, they began to look for some spiritual challenge, something to give meaning in life, quote unquote. They looked to the Far East that was in the 60s, the 70s, as they were growing up and coming of age. Black Revolution took place then. Black Revolution, looking for roots, creating roots, post facto. But those Jews that looked, looked to the Far East. They didn't look to the Middle East. But gradually, through word of mouth, backpacking, those years, the initial years of Osameach, when it opened in 72, the first attempt had been in 66, but then in 72, when it reopened, there was a certain amount of traffic coming through the Middle East, and some began to come by. But there were teachers then, so the cultural environment had changed. There were... Cultural pluralism came in. It's now the definition has been reworked. It's been tweaked. Democracy doesn't mean being like everybody else. It's exercising my option to be what I can be and would like to be. So cultural pluralism came in and melting partisan went out. There were teachers that were then available. So the world changed. The Rebbe put together 
all of the props that would be necessary for it to happen. Osamech began. The next step along the way after Osamech is doing what it's doing. The extension of that is to have people that have achieved a certain level of success in their learning come with them a certain amount of cargo from that secular world, which they can now rework to being advantageous. The Averus Hishenis Nases Chuyes, whatever skills, ideas they came with, like Rosh Lokish, Rabbi Yechanan sees Rosh Lokish and he says, Chelech Leoraisa, your energy, your bravery can now be, your skills can be used for good. The extension then became Osamech creating the Olegola program, the Hertz Institute which will prepare and has prepared hundreds of teachers to go out. Because in this new world order, as media have intruded into the home, as it's been harder to keep a hermetically sealed environment, we need people that can not just educate, we always needed it, but today it's markedly more significant. We need people that can inspire, not just give over information. People that care and have made life decisions themselves are another level of teacher. And even going in today, teaching is Kiruv as well. We've been battling a problem. While we're filling up the urn, there's a leak on the bottom. People dropping out of our community. So we have to do both, and Osamech is trying to do both, and Baruch Hashem has a certain amount of success, and the success is growing. And the Hertz Institute is a central part of Osamech's outreach work today to prepare inreach for outreach. May the Yibanishon continue to give us the kreches, the ability, to serve Klal Yisrael with consistency and with the passion that Kol Yom, there's a new, the Chazal say, that Kol Yom, the Yetzahara, is misgaber over, the Benishon helps us, otherwise we wouldn't be able to withstand it. Mitzad Cheni, Borosi Yetzahara, Borosi Tavlan, the antidote is Limur Atera. And through the Beis Medrash learning experience and taking skills, refining those skills in programs that help give those skills and define those skills, such as the Hertz Institute, then Yitz Hashem, we're doing battle with the lethargy, the lack of inspiration, and the lack of excitement. And the Banisham should give us and others the care to do more.